my name is Jonathan, I'm with MCS, and today we're going to be doing the video on the hammerhead barrel systems. So the hammerhead barrel systems, there's a, there's a lot of controversy behind uh, hammerhead. There's a lot of uh, competition out there, there's a lot of people who are very opinionated on what the best barrel is and, and you know what makes a paintball extremely accurate and what's the best for first strike compatibility of these barrel systems between other marker systems. So I'm gonna kind of clarify and give you my opinion personally based off of extensive, I would, well actually I wouldn't say extensive testing, but quite a significant amount of uh, time I spent here uh, at the office testing with these barrel systems with a lot of our uh, markers. So I'm gonna kind of go through what the Hammerhead system incorporates how it works, how do, you, how do you know if it's right for you, uh, how to choose its compatibility, um, and then kind of explain each individual component's main purpose within the system. So first I'm gonna start off with the fins, okay? Uh, actually I'll backtrack, I'll start off with, there's three main components that make up a hammerhead barrel system. The first is the fin, okay? The second obviously is the barrel itself, and then the third would be your muzzle brake. Now, starting off with the fin. The fin is the basis, the, the, the primary uh, focus behind the hammerhead barrel system. And what the fin does, besides attach it to your respective marker system, is it allows you to match and adapt to the different types of projectiles out there on the market. Now, the scientific definition of that and how it uh, translates into its importance on the system itself is with the hammerheads testing and this is years over five years of testing hammerhead put into their system they found that when you match the bore size to the ball size you can gain better compression behind the projectile now a lot of you you know it alls out there may think that that's oh duh yeah that's Everyone knows that when you, when something's tighter in an area, you'll get better air behind it, blah, blah, blah. Well, this piece in conjunction with the barrel and the muzzle brake of a hammerhead barrel system, they found that they could give you a precise amount of energy transfer within that system. And it will translate into a more stable and more accurate flight pattern of a projectile. Uh, the biggest, the biggest thing I think with uh, with round ball, okay. Let's start with paintball. Uh, you know, paintball has been around for for over thirty years, and what we found is it's really in the beginning. It's it's hard to make a spherical projectile be accurate, and that's exactly right. And in my opinion, there still is no barrel company out there that will give you that. It's there's just too many variables contributing to the accuracy and the distance uh, projection of a round projectile. So with the hammerhead barrel systems specifically, uh, the best unit of measurement, in my opinion, that you can really go by is consistency. Consistency is something that, especially with hopper fed players or hopper fed marker systems, you would ideally want the excuse me, the projectile to go the same direction every time. And with, uh, with the mag bed players especially, and what we do, you know, we only have 20 rounds to, or, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, 14 rounders, depending on the magazine type that you have. Uh, you know, you only have a, a very small amount of projectiles to get down range. So the more consistent we can be, with that magazine, the better off, you know, and the more happy you're gonna be as a player when you're going after an opponent. So, like I said, with round ball specifically, it's very difficult for you to achieve precise accuracy and distance with, a, with, a, with any barrel on the market. So, with the fin though, like I said, you're, you can achieve great consistency with round projectiles, not just Falcon Graffiti or Marbleizers or Empires or uh, GI Star or anything like that or Agent One Paint, but with multiple brands out there. So 
the fin, like I said, is the primary focus of this. And so how the next point of view, the topic I'm going to come to here is how to choose a fin. Okay. A lot of people, they, sometimes I feel the calls that I get, some people may be intimidated by the camera head barrel system because it's, it's a lot. There's three components. How do I choose? What, how do I know what's right for me? Um, you know, obviously the, the biggest thing is I want to, I want something that's going to make it go straight. Well, like I said in the beginning, the best unit of measurement for round ball, in my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of you guys will agree with me, is the consistency aspect. So when you buy your hammerhead barrel, when you're thinking about buying your hammerhead barrel system, you're going to want to pick up a ball sizer. And this ball sizer, yes, it looks like brass knuckles. No, you cannot use it as brass knuckles. So don't, don't do that. We get a lot of, a lot of funny guys out there. Um, but you're going to use this ball sizer as pretty much your, your determining factor of what fin to use. So how do you use it? You're going to see on your ball sizer, you got six different sizes, 679, 683, 689, 690, I'm sorry, 688, 690, and 693. So these six sizes are what Hammerhead has found to be the most universal between multiple brands out on the market that you will most likely encounter. Um, with your with your ball sizer, you're going to want to take whatever projectile you're using for that day, and you're going to want to test multiple rounds throughout the box, even in the same bag. Because what I found, there are inconsistencies with, even within the same bag. So you want to take your projectile, and you're going to want to pass it through these the ball sizing holes here. And what you want to find is that when you pass through the projectile through one of these holes, you want to find or you ultimately want to use the hole that has the most or I'm sorry, the medium amount of resistance. So little, little resistance. Too little of resistance is probably too small and too much resistance is probably going to cause a jam uh, in the barrel itself. So the one that has the most uh, and the little medium resistance in here. Uh, so with the AG1, this is our AG1 MagFed paint. What I found is I'm passing it through the 686, and it's just a little too much resistance, but the 686, 688, I'm sorry, works really well. So after testing about five to 10 of the projectiles within the bag, I can you know be confident in the fact that the 688 fin was probably gonna be the best size for me. So uh, keep in mind too, like I said, there's there's a lot of variables that contribute to the size of the projectile, where you're playing, the, the weather of that day, um, where you're storing your paint. Um, there's a lot of contributing factors, so that's why it's important to test your multiple projectiles in the same bag, and and ultimately throughout the day because weather conditions will change. You know, um, make sure that when you're done testing or when you're done filling up your magazines that you close up that bag because outside moisture will get in there and it will cause the projectiles to swell. Um, and depending on the quality of paint that you have, that can ultimately damage the complexity of the shell itself. So one thing that I do get a lot of uh, questions about when regards to paint and using the hammerhead barrel system is quality. Um, and I think overall, the rule of thumb for mag-fed players, and I know, you know with our markers especially, you want to use a thicker shell paint. MagFed markers and MagFed paintball, you have to remember these projectiles are sitting in a magazine under spring tension. So if you put in a poor quality paint and you know it, it doesn't have that thick shell and it's just you know it's, it's bottom of the barrel field paint, what's probably gonna happen is that spring tension within the magazine is going to damage that shell. And it's either going to break in the magazine or as soon as it's going to, it's going to damage the projectile itself. And as it enters the breach and the bolt hits that projectile, it's most likely going to cause a break. Um, and so just keep that in mind. There, there's, a, there's way too many brands of paint out there for us to go through individually and match it up for you guys on here. But the ball sizer is a great tool for that. So even if you don't have a hammerhead barrel system, you know, pick up a hammerhead ball sizer. They are available on hammerheadpaintball.com and they're great for you guys out there that may use other brands of barrels that are specific bore size. Um, so that'll allow you to be more uh, 
more adaptive to your set or surroundings when you're using different types of paint. So, uh, back on track here, that's how you choose a fin. Um, the next part of the barrel system is obviously the barrel, okay? Uh, there's a couple different lines of barrel models that Hammerhead offers. Uh, and some of them you'll see come standard with some of our guns, like the DMR. Uh, there, you know, some of the other ones. I think actually, I think the DMR is the only one. But there's a couple different models, and most of them are different uh, cosmetically, and that's basically either the length or the materials in which they're made out of. So when you get your hammerhead barrel, they're all going to come with spiral rifling. So, and the reason why you receive spiral rifling is just because, like I said before, through the years of testing that hammerhead has done, they have found that spiral rifling matched with the correct fin size and the compression will allow the projectile to catch and develop a, a certain type of spin in which and then will translate out of the barrel into a more consistent flight pattern. So what they found with their testing is when you choose a projectile, when you have a projectile, I'm sorry, that is 687 to 693, it's going to catch the rifling a lot better on the barrel itself. So, not to say that if you have a projectile that's out of that spec, that it will not, a hammerhead barrel system will not work for you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that they have just found through their testing that when you use a projectile with that size, it, it will catch the rifling a little bit better and you'll get that added performance and, and ultimately that, that added distance with the projectile itself. So, ideally speaking, your, your primary focus is the fin. If, you have, if you're not using the right fin, you, you may not see, you might, get, you might not get the most out of your hammerhead barrel. So that's, that's kind of an important part here. So, like I said, each hammerhead barrel is gonna come with spiraled rifling. And then with, with spiraled rifling, you have to keep in mind that that consists of lands and grooves. So the lands and grooves aspect, for a lot of you who don't know what that is and have not read uh, hammerhead uh, informational blocks on the website, Lands and grooves is essentially the part where it spirals through. You have a land side, which is a side that actually makes contact with the projectile. And then you have the groove side, which is where actually the air pocket develops to create the spin within the projectile. Um, the lands and grooves dimensions or bore size of that would be the lands are 687 and the grooves are 684. So that's why I was saying, you know, with Hammerhead's testing, they found that with the 687 to 693 projectile, it'll catch those lands uh, a little bit better than other projectiles that might be, excuse me, a little bit smaller. So with the, with the lands and grooves aspect, like I said, you know, it, it, it's not to say that if you have a projectile that's out of that, it's not going to work. It, it will, it will work for you. So, um, a lot of the specs and the information on the hammerhead barrel system and why each individual component was developed is available on the hammerheadpaintball.com website. And you can go there and underneath the tabs, you'll be able to read uh, basically hammerhead 101. Why, how to choose the fin if you don't get to, if you don't want to watch this video all the way through, uh, you may have missed information or you just have more questions. You can also go on the website and uh, send an email or come into the chat and talk to me or Jamie. Uh, and we'll talk to you and kind of walk through uh, the process with you on how to choose a hammerhead barrel that works for you. So uh, that's the barrel aspect. Uh, the final component of the system itself is the muzzle brake. Now, hammerhead muzzle brakes or muzzle brakes in general, uh, they usually do not serve a purpose at all. They're usually cosmetic. And these are some, you've seen some of the ones on the MCS and RAP4 uh, website. So these right here, we have, we have tons of them, probably over 15 different types available for 68 caliber. Uh, they really don't serve a purpose. They're strictly cosmetic. Uh, that goes for people who also think that silencers and sound amplifiers really work. In my opinion, they, they really don't serve a purpose. <laughs> so, um, but the hammerhead muzzle brakes do serve a purpose. And the, the reason for that is because they offer reverse porting. And in conjunction with the fin and the barrel, what they found that during that energy transfer, while the projectile travels through the fin, through the barrel, and then exits out of the muzzle brake, they found that when the air 
escapes through these reverse ported holes, it will continue that flight pattern that has developed throughout the barrel portion. So instead of the, the air as it exits the barrel uh, basically contributing to the projectile's flight pattern in a negative way, the reverse porting allows for sound displacement as well, but it also, like I said, allows for the projectile to continue its de already developed flight pattern uh, as a consistent amount. So the hammerhead muzzle brakes do give you that performance upgrade. And there's a couple different types. So you have your battle sticks, your bang sticks, suppressor type, and your shark tooth. So those, project, those muzzle brakes are only compatible with the hammerhead barrel systems. Those can include the battle sticks and the bang sticks, scenario mofo, mofo barrels, and the Widowmaker. Now, keep in mind, like I was telling you before, the only differences between the Hammerhead uh, barrel line is usually the length and then the cosmetic makeup as far as the materials. All Hammerhead barrels are gun drilled from aircraft grade aluminum billet. Okay, they are micro honed, polished, and gun drilled. So you, you're getting a quality barrel, and you're going to see that when you check out and you have the hammerhead barrel systems in your cart. They are an investment, but in my opinion, compared to the other barrels on the market, you're really not, you're not, you don't have the options to adapt to the different fields and the different restrictions that you may or may not encounter as far as projectiles you can use. Um, first strikes especially. Now, I get a lot of questions of the hammerhead barrel will work well with first strikes. Personally, with my testing here, they work flawlessly with first strikes or any shape projectile. Um, for, you, for those of you looking for a, the, wanting to know the fin, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll put that for you right now. The 688 is actually a little high, but the 686 works extremely well with first strikes. Now, I did hear through the grapevine that First Strike was trying to uh, make their rounds more consistent in the 683 bore size, but with the, with the projectiles and the rounds that I have here, I've yet to find a, a consistent batch that are all 683. So from now on, I'm going to tell you that the 686 is a, is a correct fin size for the shape projectiles, uh, First Strike specifically. Um, but Back on track. So, like I was telling you, the, the different types of hammerhead barrels, you got the Bang 6, which comes in a 16-inch model only. You have the Battle 6, which comes in your 14-inch. Uh, you also have your Widowmakers, your 4.5-inch, Scenario Mofos, your 10s and 12s. Um, keep in mind, with the hammerhead barrel system, the length of the barrel includes the fin and the muzzle brake. Okay, so for those of you who are asking, hey, why don't they make a 22 inch or why don't they have a uh, 18 inch and blah, blah, blah. The reason why these lengths are specific and all under 16 inches is because Hammerhead through their testing has found that any barrel over that 16 inch mark really doesn't add or take away from the performance of the barrel. So. They found that the 16 inch and below uh, adheres to multiple types of players, which in my opinion, were the way that we sell them, they do. They allow, I mean, these Scenario mobile barrels are made out of carbon fiber. They're 2.3 ounces, so they're extremely light. Uh, I see a lot of our tournament players are using the Scenario Mofo and Mofo barrels. Um, we did offer them in a, in a camo pattern, which I'm not sure is coming back. Um, but, you know, check back on the website, hammerheadpaintball.com, or come into the chat and ask me, and I'll get a more precise answer for you. Um, but the carbon fiber barrels, I mean, they're extremely light, and they, and they look kind of cool, too. So, um, those are the differences. Um, they're also, I know you guys have seen on our website, and we've advertised before, is the Hammerhead One-Shot Barrel. We also have a Hammerhead Shape Projectile Barrel, which is the one I was talking about earlier, that comes standard on the DMR. Now, those two barrels are a little bit different than the actual hammerhead line themselves. 
And how they differ is they are direct threaded, okay? Also, the, they are not compatible with the hammerhead muzzle brakes. They are compatible with our MCS and RAV4.com muzzle brakes. So, uh, the, these barrels, especially the one-shot barrel, the shape projectile barrel, those were designed for those who are wanting to use primarily, primarily first strikes. Okay, Falcon Graffiti works well with those barrels. I've tested that. Um, our AG1 MagFed, MagFed paint, I'm sorry, works well with these two barrels. Um, but keep in mind, those of you who are looking to get your direct threaded barrels, the shape projectile barrel was spider threaded. That was, like I said, direct threaded. So that was compatible with the 468 um, and then the DMR. But now the one shot barrel is A5 threaded. And the reason why we, we designed this one is because of a lot of you guys out there already have the A5 converters um, as far as for barrel threads. So we did that also because now you have the one piece uppers for the 468 and the new DMR uppers are all compatible with the A5 threading. So you can take advantage of the one shot barrel. Those come in an 8, 10, and 14 inch. Uh, there's no talks of longer barrels. Like I said, there's really, there's really no difference between the lengths. Uh, I know there's a lot of you guys out there looking for sniper platforms that have that longer barrel, but like I said, a longer barrel does not equal a more accurate and a longer distance shot, okay? This isn't a real steel firearm. There's, there's just too many variables that contribute to the accuracy of a, a round projectile. Now, first strikes is a different story. I don't, think, I don't think there's been a lot of testing done as far as the length of a barrel that will, with a first strike, to see if that would make it go farther. Um, I know with the DMR, with the abilities for it to achieve some pretty high FPS, uh, we use the shape projectile barrel, the 16 inch, and we're able to hit some very, very far distances um, with that. But like I said, the, the shape projectile and the difference between them both is night and day as far as composition and then obviously material and, and, and basically performance aspect. So, um, Eric, to answer your question, do you see a major difference with the two barrels put together? Um, in all honesty, I really don't. It, for me, the hammerhead barrel system will only work if you are using it correctly. And what I mean by that is the, the fins is a, is a primary uh, focus of the system itself. If you're not use, utilizing the fins correctly, you're not going to maximize the potential um, of the, the barrel system as a whole. Uh, also, one thing that I didn't mention before is the FPS of the barrel, the optimized uh, settings for a hammerhead barrel system. So along with the length, we went through that, so 16 inches and below, but the FPS, um, you know, these these project or these barrel systems are optimized at 260 to 285 FPS average. So when you're when you're going out to the range and you're test firing and you're checking your chrono, you're gonna see a, a pretty good influence uh, performance with round balls specifically when you are using these barrel systems at that respected FPS, okay? There's, I get a lot of questions of people on a lot of, you know, kind of a lot of comments like, well, what if I crank it up to 350 and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, like I said, 350 on some of our markers especially, you know, you're, you're now teetering with different aspects of performance throughout the internal system itself. So ideally you want to keep when you're using a hammerhead barrel system, you're going to want to chrono in at 265 to 280, at least at 275 average. And I think you're going to see some, some great increase, a great increase in performance with round ball specifically. Um, like I said, the main difference between the, with any of them, I, I really don't see a difference. I think uh, it really comes down to the projectile that you're using yourself. Um, last topic of the hammerhead barrel system is compatibility. Okay, uh, this is a big selling point for me uh, that I think a lot of players don't see in other barrel companies out there that, you know, that are in competition with the hammerhead barrel system is compatibility. Um, we, the hammerhead barrel system is compatible with a lot of the major systems and markers out there. You have Autococker, um, Angel, Ion, 
98, A5, uh, X7, which uses the A5, and then ultimately spider threaded as well. So you have multiple systems that can take advantage of the hammerhead barrel systems, um, both on the hopper side of the spectrum and then obviously the magbed side. So I, for me, like I said, there, there's just not a lot of barrel companies out there. Uh, another aspect of hammerhead that, you know, for you guys to keep in mind is hammerhead has done a year, uh, so much testing and, and they, they really did the legwork for us when trying to figure out and kind of, kind of knock away all of these dreams and, uh, <laughs> and fantasies of, you know, the most, the, the barrel that can give you the most accurate shot with a paintball. And that they kind of deterred that notion for you and they gave you a system that actually works and adds to better consistency within the projectile itself. So, uh, like I said, if you guys have any questions about the Hammerhead Barrel System, you can go on to hammerheadpaintball.com or you can go on to mcsus.com, come on the chat, ask for me, Jonathan or Jamie, and uh, we can answer any questions that you have. Uh, other than that, I hope to see you guys on the field, and I will take, talk to you guys later. Combat Sports.